Good morning. So we're here at breakfast uh, the next morning. We just had a, a good sleep actually. I think that was probably the best sleep I've had yet. But also like it was really nice um, night event with all the guests and dinner, mm, yeah, yeah. dancing, all of that. But we're here greeted with our breakfast feast as always. Um, so this is like a pot of Georgian yogurt called Mazzoni, I think. Mm -hmm. At least that's what Google said. I think that's what she said. <laughs> And then we've got like a boiled egg, cheese, this freshly baked bread and honey, which I think is from the local area. I think so too. And hope, I think homemade jam. Yeah. And she said this is chicken something. Okay. Something, something to do with chicken, I don't know. And but the yeah. winner here is also the butter. Yes, the butter is amazing here. Yeah. I don't know what they do. I guess it's just freshly made, but it's really good. So we have been staying in this beautiful traditional Georgian homes. Uh, we found this accommodation through different blogs mentioning this house and we paid 120 lari per person that includes three meals per day so if you are traveling alone you will be paying around 150 lari uh, depending on the season but that's about the price that equals to 35 pounds to 40 dollars per night per person um, and the food has been incredible I think we've gained weight from here, staying here now let's get into inside and see how the Georgians usually make wine because traditionally they have this barrel that is set underneath the, f the ground. It's so interesting and I actually have never seen that. As you can see, there are lots of holes over here. These are underground wine making barrels. This is how traditionally Georgian make their wine. And if you can see, I do have and interesting stuff. I was told that this is how they would clean the barrel. However, the guest house is no longer using this because it is a pain <laughs> to clean this up and they move to something a bit more efficient. But it is interesting because the guest house alone, they make over 1500 liters wine per year for the guests only and they're not even selling it can you imagine how much wine <laughs> the guests drink here this is the country of wine making this will would hold 300 liters of wine it's um, crazy so, so this picture here is is made out of pumpkins and this is what they used to actually collect the wine out of the underground barrels traditionally so apart from wine making georgians are also notoriously famous for cha-cha making. Cha-cha is equivalent to raki in the Balkans or raksi in the Himalayans area, basically vodka. Yeah, it's just a very strong moonshot. It's so fiery if you try it. So this is another one of their rooms, which uh, the father has actually carved these pillars, which are amazing. And underneath here, this is where they actually have the modern winemaking, which is locked right now, but they make it in uh, plastic barrels now because it's much easier to clean and they can make it in much larger quantities, I think. so. I noticed yesterday when he was giving us a tour of the place that they've got an old like Soviet military jacket, which I asked him if I could try on. And he said, yeah, cool. So, so cool. It's like a movie prop now. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you look like um feel like I'm Soviet getting ready elite. to star in like a It's a grand I, I do like the design. It sort of reminds me like the coat people wear in London. Mm. It's so like you can see why they wore these, it's so warm. Yeah, obviously. 
You can see the uh, communism symbol here. And I don't know, maybe if people know more about military, they'll know what, I don't know what rank that is, it's like one stripe. This is the most expensive meat in Georgia. So this is a smokehouse. This is like specialty meat, this is expensive. Um, and I think they, he said this, this one was dried over a year ago, but because of the smoke and, and obviously the cold, it just preserves uh, like dried meat. And this is this was very popular for taking to like war as like war rations because it makes you full very quickly and it doesn't go bad. So yeah. So here they have some of the sort of ancient fossils and artifacts that they've found in the mountains, as all of this mountain range used to be the seabed. This is a fossil of a turtle that was found here in the local mountains, and here is a big shell which um, the owners of this guest house actually cracked open themselves. It's fascinating to think that this whole area used to be ocean and sea and now it's these grand mountains. So they also have these which they're not 100% sure what they are but they know that they're very old. They're either dinosaur eggs or from even before that like from the volcanic era. Um, but these were also found in the mountains so fascinating like thinking however many hundreds of millions of years old these could be and exactly what they are and of course we're gonna miss our favorite little friend Bombora Bombora come here's a good girl <laughs> come come kiss hello good girl good girl love a dog like this one day. Are you ready for the day? I think so. We've just had a, a bit of a talk through of where we're going to go from uh, the guy at the guest house. Nika. So, Nika. Um, so we're going to go up hopefully quite high but because the sun sets quite early in the winter, we're gonna have to be quite quick. <laughs> but we're going up to Stalin House, mm -hmm. followed by some mountains. So let's go. I think I'm gobsmack, that's the word, <laughs> with the view that we are driving towards. Feels like we're back in Nepal, but with better roads, perhaps. Oh, definitely better roads. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nepalese. Yeah, and I suppose we are lucky with the weather. It's so clear. Mm. It's so picturesque. I still can't believe it. Funny thing is, there's actually almost no car traffic. Like, we've only passed a few cars, but we passed a lot more cows than cars. So I think cows is the, <laughs> that's the local traffic here. It's cute. And pigs, little pigs on the side of the road as well. <laughs> you feel like you're traveling like a local. Yeah.
just stopping over for a quick break but we have been very pleasantly surprised by the Caucasus mountains obviously we have been also very lucky with the clear weather so it's just constant stunning views isn't it yeah mm. and almost no cars on the road yeah so. sorry good job Georgia thank you <laughs> Feels so, we didn't know what to expect honestly not as tight as the other bridge we were on. Nope. We finally have made it to little town of Chauvy, up far north of Georgia. This is actually a resort town, um, but it's quite empty. We are here specifically for a unique building that we were told about by our guest house. Something to do with Stalin. Interesting. As you can see this glorious entrance. And this is where you uh, buy the ticket to get in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, finally the tour guides arrived. <laughs> Apparently this is Stalin's dog. Still alive. Pretty incredible. <laughs> it's so funny. Wherever you go, there will always be... Not only in Georgia, actually. Even when I was in Azerbaijan, there's always dog coming to greet you and probably accompany you. <laughs> They're like just excited to see another human being. You must They're... be so bored here. <laughs> yeah, potentially. Good boy. So I think this area is surrounded by three different sides of the mountain. I just can't believe we have it here right here not on our computer like windows screen saver if we... it's actually kind of very bizarre being here because yeah it looks quite abandoned it's, yeah it looks it completely abandoned, abandoned. <laughs> i think i did remember yeah. reading online somewhere that that no one lives here during winter they move down so i don't i don't know if in summer there's more people but it's uh it's quite cool just having the whole place to ourselves yeah So I was reading online, trying to find information, right, about this, because there's n not much information available online, but several website or articles mentioning that because of the famous region, famous region, <laughs> the region's famous carbonated water, mineral water, the spring water, as well as the wine, this is the hub for a lot of Soviet elite um, as a holiday hotspot, not only in Georgia, but throughout Eastern Europe. Fascinating. <laughs> it's so spooky.
What do you think? It's quite creepy and I've been thinking like I'm so worried that it suddenly, if it follows us, you know, and then we're here. <laughs> this potentially was used as the resort house, holiday homes for the elites, the politicians um, during the communist time. I mean, you can potentially think that this is Switzerland with the mountains just right over there. I don't know what to say really. <laughs> it does feel a little bit like the floor could collapse at any point. <laughs> I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's safe. But it's, it's just crazy to think who would have been in here, like having a holiday, drinking, plotting. I don't even know what on earth would have plotting been. Plotting <laughs> the world. The fact that this used to just be full of these elite people potentially. And now it's just ruined and we're walking around it however many years later. This is the first time both of us visit this kind of... It's abandoned building. Yeah, it feels a bit edgy, edgy mm. traveller. <laughs> Very cool. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to try cross this. I think it's uh, all right. It doesn't look very promising. No. I think it should be fine. I think your grandma and mum will be so worried watching this. <laughs> okay, that's all right. It's okay. <laughs> Away in the Caucasus mountains, only a few kilometers from the Russian border, many believe that this now abandoned holiday resort was used as a holiday gateway by many Soviet elites. Joseph Stalin, who was actually born in eastern Georgia, was a particular fan of the region's red wine and built a retirement home here. Although we didn't know exactly who had been in this house, it had quite a haunting atmosphere. His only friends. Bye bye. Oh, there we go. It's very soft. Bye bye. And clean. So, what are we doing now? We are heading to an off road area. <laughs> Potentially a bit more challenging for you to drive. Yep. And enjoyable for me to sit on and. Well, to we'll see, see the about view. that. <laughs>
Nih. What happened? I mean, there was only like a tiny dip in the road, but of course I have no idea how to drive 4x4. So it was my first mini challenge, but now we've got, I think it gets worse up here. So I'm excited, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> making our way on the road up towards it's called Chiora Peak you can actually drive all the way to the top of the peak but we probably won't have time today so we're just driving up as far as we can and as far as my skills will <laughs> take us <laughs> which is probably the bigger factor this makes me a bit nervous oh my god this reminds me of my drive in Albania. I'm having fun. Yeah. I think, I it's think this is why people like driving off-road, honestly. Yeah. Once you get kind of comfortable just with the unevenness of the terrain, and I, I guess you have to know the width of the vehicle quite well to know where your tyres are. Um, but once you sort of get the gist, it's not too bad. I mean, the roads also, like, they've been off-road, but they haven't been terrible yet. I'm sure they get a lot worse than this mm. <laughs> later on. So we'll just see how far we get. too good to be true. I know. It's also nice, I think, I bet if we came like three weeks ago, the leaves would still be on the trees, but still actually, still really nice, because there's all the orange and the brown, and some of the trees still have color on them from autumn. I think this is actually a really nice time to come. Mm, dry as well. Yeah. This is so nerve-wracking because Wait. of the slippery bit. Yeah, it's just there's there was a, a pretty muddy section just there. And you can feel the car the, moving around yeah, like dancing. The car sliding. <laughs> sliding back and forth. Ah, this is sliding. I don't think I've filmed my expressions enough during this like off-road part of the journey. <laughs> yeah, it's just a lot of oh. Nerve. 
nerve-wracking sliding moments and not knowing whether you know you can turn around the car eventually I don't know who's going through this uh, you know roads yeah there's roads that are basically a viewpoint oh that looks very muddy oh probably let's not push it too hard do you want to turn around I mean there is that I mean, we, can, we can turn around here if you want yeah yeah I think yeah I mean <laughs> I mean, what, does it look even muddier than the previous one we were on? I mean, I guess we could just try and if not, we could just reverse back to this point. Up to you. Yeah, okay. There's even the snow. There's no there. Yeah. Oh. Ah! Can you see all of this? Ah. Hmm. Not sure. How do I go up this bit? <laughs> I think I think we follow that track that's already been Yeah, I guess if it's used and then we turn around. Not long after that. <laughs> okay. Look at this view that we. It's crazy. <laughs> we've we've been rewarded. Oh my god! Oh my dear! I think this is the end. I haven't even had a chance to look because I've been concentrating so much on the road. Well, that was a thrilling journey, wasn't it? Yes. I don't know how to even explain that. That's fantastic. Yeah, definitely worth it for the views. <laughs> mm. That's pretty much about it. A video from Racha region. It's a fantastic region. If you've never been to Georgia, mm. like definitely I think, recommend it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's so beautiful, and we rarely see tourists. I don't know if it's because of winter as well. Mm. Mm. Maybe. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. And the next one we'll be heading west. Yeah. further on the road trip before driving back to Tbilisi yep <laughs> see you bye bye